Today in the shed, disc brakes. Whether that's fitting a brand new set, replacing an old tired out set or as an upgrade, or even just refitting an older set, there's a few basic things that we need to make sure that we're done correctly to ensure that the brakes operate as best as they can do, and that there isn't any rubbing, and that the cables are the correct lengths, and that everything's torqued up properly. So that crucial element of the bike for both safety and control is as good as it can be. We're going to be replacing an existing set of Avids with a new set of Maguras. So first thing we're going to do, strip the Avids off. So with everything removed and the bike prepared to fit your new brake, and you're going to start at the caliper end. We fit the caliper first and then measure up from there. So any excess length of hose is at the master cylinder lever end of your brake line as opposed to at the caliper end. You're going to either need a 5mm Allen key or in the case of Magura's a Torx 25. You're going to apply a small amount of grease, just a very small, slight amount, and some fresh thread lock. Fitting hardware frequently is shipped with a small amount of blue medium thread lock, which is already dried, but this is nowhere near as effective as applying fresh thread lock that will cure once it's been fitted. Now, I'm not going to align my caliper quite yet. I'm just going to get it loosely on so I can measure my brake line and then get my lever attached to the bars. And then I will come back to the caliper and then align it properly with the rotor so that there's no rubbing and it's perfectly and optimally spaced with the rotor center to the caliper. Now post mount fitting, you're going straight through the bolt mounting holes on the caliper to the fork. There is no adapter required for a 160 millimeter rotor. Fitting the front brake, ensure the brake hose goes behind the fork lower and not on the outside. This will prevent it getting caught or snagged or pulled in the undergrowth on the side of any trails and will stop the brake line tagging and pulling your steering or worse, ripping the hose clean out of the brake. Either situation is you're going to end up crashing. So remove the clamp bolts from the lever. Before attaching the master cylinder lever to the bars, apply grease if attaching to an aluminium bar or carbon grip paste if attaching to a carbon bar. So offer up the brake lever to the handlebar, put the back of the clamp in place. Never ground out a single bolt on any kind of clamp. Apply pressure evenly to all the bolts simultaneously so that the clamp pressure is even across the clamp surface area. So that is just as important for brake levers and shifters as that have multiple clamp bolts as it is for stem face plates. Something to look out for with any clamp or stem face plate is that the space between the bolts is 100% even top and bottom. If the spacing is uneven then that suggests that the clamping force is uneven which is give a higher probability of failure. When positioning the lever on the bars, place it so that your hand with no more than 10 mil from the end of the bar to your hand, with your braking index finger extended, that the crook of the lever rests in your last knuckle. Then you'll be able to brake effectively whilst also maintaining control of the bars. Most brakes these days, either with a dial or by adjusting a bolt can also adjust the reach of the lever so that the lever fits neatly in that last knuckle. And by the reach we mean how far the lever is from the bar. Now in terms of the angle of the lever, there's a popular trend at the moment for near on horizontal levers. Now if you do that, you run the risk of creating a weak point in your wrist as your weight bears down on that wrist, which will increase arm pump and hand cramp on prolonged descents, and also actually reduces the amount of force you can exert on the brake. What you want 
is when you're in your attack position, a straight line down your arm, through your wrist, through your finger, to the brake. Also ensure that your front and back brakes are set up the same. You can do this with a ruler by measuring to ensure the distance between the lever and the grips is the same on both sides. And if you make any adjustment to the reach of the lever, measure from the tip of the lever blade 90 degrees onto the bar, and that will tell you if both are set up the same. Some riders prefer a front to back bias, either to take up the account that the back brake tends to have a little more pull before you get to your bite point anyway because of the longer hose, or because they prefer to have the back to have slightly more power or the front to have slightly more power. By changing the reach, you can modulate that somewhat. So with our lever now fitted correctly, torqued and set up for preference, it's now to return to the caliper end where I'm going to now align the caliper perfectly with the brake. So the caliper. For perfect setup, we can't have any rubbing between the rotor and the caliper. It's not ideal, suboptimal. There are two ways that I like doing it and three ways I end up doing it. The easiest and the textbook way, which sometimes works, is to loosen the bolts, holding your caliper in place, pull the lever hard on. This will then self-center the caliper as the pistons close in and the pads grip onto the, the rotor and then tighten those bolts back up. I find that works some of the time. I find that if the pistons move an uneven amount, or if it's an older brake, or the rotor itself has a wobble to it because it's an older rotor, then that technique doesn't always give me the best results. The second technique, and is the one that I tended to use an awful lot with my Avids, was pure eyeballing. I would get a torch, illuminate from the bottom, hold the caliper in place, turning the wheel as I did so until I could see it was nice and centered. I would then tighten it down a little bit top and bottom each time so that in tightening it, I didn't pull the caliper one way or the other. The last technique and the one I'm gonna show you today is I'm gonna use spacers in the caliper, evenly either side of the rotor, will again help self-center the caliper, but give me a little bit of throw with the pads. So, how am I going to do that? So I'm going to start off by slightly loosening my caliper bolts. So the caliper has free movement there. I'm going to take my two shims made out of an old gym membership card. I'm going to place them either side of the rotor and feed them in. So with them in place, I simply now pull on the brake and when I do so I'll see the caliper self-centre as both pads move in and at this point I tighten a quarter turn top and bottom evenly one at a time, the whole while holding tight on the brake. The bolt's done up, simply case of turning the wheel to get the shims out. So with the brake now fitted, the lever's happy and the caliper running sweet. The last thing to do is to shorten that hose, and that's going to be subject of another video. If you like this video, give us a like and subscribe in the comments, and come back soon to see how to shorten a brake hose, and then how to re-bleed afterwards. Now, I'm going to go get a cup of tea, because it's brass monkeys out there, as it's still winter somehow in the middle of March. Cool, thanks for watching. Happy trails.